I've got five premium studio monitors here and I've mixed the same song with all of them. In this video, you decide which is best. This is gonna be fun. Let's start with a blind test. I'll tell you which one was my favorite after. Oh, and thanks to Zounds for sending me some of these speakers to test out. Zounds has these speakers in stock, their shipping is quick, and hey, nice people too. I'll put links to get any of these speakers in the video description below. So, did you pick your favorites? I did. Comment below with your top three. Here are mine. I should mention that although there are various sizes here, all these studio monitors are around the same price. Let's reveal them now. Now, let's talk about each of the speakers and my thoughts on the mixes. But before we do, if you're making music at home and want to share it with your friends and family and the whole world, you should check out DistroKid, the sponsor of today's video. I use DistroKid to upload my music to Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, pretty much everywhere. No record label needed, I just do it myself straight from my computer. DistroKid distributes your music to all the popular platforms all at once, and they'll collect earnings from all the platforms so you get paid for downloads and plays. One of my favorite features of DistroKid is Hyperfollow. Once you upload your music, your unique Hyperfollow page allows you to promote your music anywhere you want and share the link. And it's easy to get people to keep up with your future releases this way. Marketing your music, so important. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid to give you all the details about how it works, how you upload, and how you get paid. Check out those videos, and if you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that will give you 7% off your first year of DistroKid membership. Okay, let's talk about the Genelec 8030C first. It was a pleasure to mix vocals on these speakers. In fact, anything from the mid to high range was crystal clear and so nice and upfront. But the bass was hard to hear. The low end of my kick drum was gone, so I I compensated in the mix. You may hear that in the mix, and it resulted in a good balance, I think. These studio monitors really need to be paired with a subwoofer so you can hear what you're doing on the low end. I just mix the bass blindly. While mixing in my studio, I noticed an annoying resonance in bass frequencies around 194 hertz, so I adjusted for that as well. You may not have that problem because it could just be my room. I left the settings on the back alone, by the way. I think these are great studio monitors and I really liked mixing my vocals with them. Very comfortable for listening for long sessions too, but you'll need to invest in a subwoofer to get the most out of them. Or maybe consider another studio monitor 
if you want that base. By the way, if you're looking for more affordable studio monitors, I tested the best five inch monitors in a video right here. You can get an excellent pair for just $300. Check out that video. The Atom Audio, while mixing, had the widest and fullest space. It was much easier to adjust my kick drum because of the larger seven inch driver. I didn't find the high end harsh, but I found myself lowering a lot of the high end because it blended better. At the same time, my synth bass top end got lost. Maybe because I was overly excited with the nice low end. These are probably some of the most pleasant studio monitors to mix with. I kind of felt like it separated everything well, sort of like the Biodynamic DT770 headphones, but without the sometimes bright high frequencies on those headphones. And I think the Atom speakers strike an almost perfect balance between hearing a wide frequency spectrum, bass, treble, mids, while at the same time creating a very comfortable mixing sound. All right, next up, the Neumann KH120A studio monitors are very compact and the build quality feels so good. I mean, Neumann is a premium brand. They make the most popular mics for studios. Anyway, about the sound. These are similar in size to the Genelex, but not as clear in the highs, but the mids were more comfortable to mix than the Genelex. I heard them better. I felt these were more balanced as well, but how did that translate to the mix? Well, I actually found that this was one of my favorite mixes, but there's something you need to remember. I, again, overcompensated for the lack of bass, just because I couldn't hear much of it. But that seemed to translate better in the end. I actually like the overcompensation that I did. Of course, these need a sub so you're not mixing bass blindly like I was, especially if you're mixing hip hop or EDM. I think if you're considering the Genelex, you should look at these as well. Okay, the Focal Shape 50 is on the higher end of the price range and it kind of looks like you're paying for this wood. How about the sound? Well, these have a big sound for their size and they're extremely pleasant but maybe to a fault. I felt that the vocals were too perfect at first listen. Here's what I mean. When I had mixed with the other speakers, I heard a harshness at the top end of the vocals, but I didn't hear that on the Shape 50s. So I kind of felt like they didn't reveal enough of the high end. That said, everything felt balanced and I didn't feel like I was missing much bass, which I usually do when I move from my barefoot monitors down to smaller ones. These are great looking monitors and Focal is well known for excellent speakers. Okay, as soon as I loaded up the Output Frontiers, I was very happy with the sound of my song without mixing. I don't know if that's a good thing. The other speakers had a lot more high end. So I set a few track volumes down and I felt I was done. And how did it translate in the mix? Well, when I listened with headphones, the output mix had the loudest vocals, not really to my liking. By the way, Output Frontier monitors are only available on the output site, so check the link below for the latest prices and deals. So this test is in no way scientific. There are so many variables we can't account for, like the headphones or speakers you're listening with, my imperfect mixing environment, and my own bias mixing the same song multiple times. But I think it was fun to do anyway. Oh, and don't forget that no matter what studio monitors you use, you'll need to spend some time learning them. That's more important than how they sound to you the first time. And after listening in my car and with headphones, if I were to mix these again, I would make the vocals fuller and the whole thing less bright. But hey, I didn't cheat and go back and mix them again. Again, you're hearing my first mix. Thanks to Zounds for hooking me up with these monitors to test out. Check out Zounds.com if you want the latest music gear, great sales, and even refurbished and used gear. If you really like my mix with any one of these monitors, you can get any one of them using the links below. Keep making the music you love, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>